إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور ينفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Earlier on today we spoke about a very important topic and that was the characteristics and the attributes that we need to possess in order to be from the people of Jannah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Jannah is something that we all strive for. It is the main goal and purpose in our life to achieve the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal and His reward, and His reward is Jannah. Now amongst the Arabs, they have a certain practice because the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. And the Prophet ﷺ was an Arab. And many of the holy places of Islam are in the Arab world. So Arabic has a very important place within this religion. According to some scholars and some ahadith, the language that we will speak in Jannah, insha'Allah, will also be the language of Arabic. So in Arabic there are a number of practices. And from those practices is that when they want to speak about something important, something that is important for them in their culture, in their society, in their community. They give it a lot of names, a lot of words that all point to the same thing. And this is something that you have in other cultures as well. My origin is from the Indo-Pak region. I am originally Pakistani. And amongst our culture, in our culture, we have many, many different names for our various relatives within the family in the Urdu language. If you were to look at English, for example, you just say uncle and you just say auntie. An uncle and an auntie refer to so many people. You see, anyone, he's an uncle. Anyone is an uncle. Anyone older than you is an uncle. Anyone that's a female, she's older than you, she's an auntie. And so, in the English language, there's very few words. But in the Indo-Pak languages, there are many, many words that are given to many different relations. All of them have been laid out. Why? Because in that culture it is very important, very, very important that you have good family ties. The families are very close together and so they have a lot of words for them. I'm sure in the Somali culture there are certain things like that as well, although I don't know Somali so I don't know what words, but I'm sure that there are other things as well that they have a lot of names for, a lot of words for, and they all point to the same thing. So likewise in the Arabic language, anything that is important is given a lot of words to show its importance. So for example, in the Arabic language, the word lion, Asad, there are so many different words that refer to lion and that refer to sword and that refer to courage and bravery. Because amongst the Arabs, especially of old, in the pagan Arabs, courage and bravery was something very important. Courage, bravery was something they held dear. So they gave it many, many words. And so this was the Arab practice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adopted that and He placed it within the religion of Islam as well. So when you look in the Quran and you look in the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, you will find that what is important, Allah has given it many names. If you were to look in the Quran, the book of Allah itself, the Qur'an, has many, many names. Allah describes it in many, many ways. And because of its importance, it is given this. If you look at the Prophet wasallam, he has many names, many nicknames, many attributes that we know him by wasallam. Again, because of his importance. If you were to look at, for example, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment, which is the topic and the theme of this conference, you will find exactly the same thing. In the Quran and in the Sunnah, there are so many names for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Yawm Al-Deen, Darul Akhirah, so many different names for just one day. 
So likewise, when it comes to paradise, because of its importance, because it is the main goal and the main ambition that we have in the dunya, then Allah Azza wa Jal has given it many names. Jannah is only one name for paradise. And Jannah refers in the Arabic language to something which is hidden, something that you can't see. And that's why we call jinn the jinn, because we can't see them. They're hidden from our eyes. And Jannah likewise comes from that same root word, because it's hidden from our eyes. No one can see Jannah. No one can hear what's in Jannah. No one can imagine Jannah. It is hidden from us in the dunya. But Jannah is only one name for paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the Quran speaks about Jannah and He gives it so many names. From amongst those names is Darus Salam, the abode of peace, a place of peace and security and serenity and tranquility. Lahum Darus Salam inda Rabbihim. For them is the place of peace with their Lord Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal has made Jannah a place of peace. Now everyone in the dunya knows, as we live our lives, the difficulties that we face, the hardships that we face, how distressed we become, how depressed sometimes we become. This is the nature of the world. But in Jannah, there is no such thing. No worries, no distress, no sorrows, no sadness, only peace and tranquility. And that's why when Allah Azza wa Jal will meet the believers in Jannah, He will say to them, Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. And when, they, and when the people of Jannah enter into Jannah, the Malaika, the angels of Allah, greet them. Tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. Their greeting within Jannah is salam. It is peace. So, Darus Salam, it is a place of peace. From the names of Jannah that we find in the Quran is Darul Khuld, a place that is ever living, it is eternal. So, a person who goes into Jannah will be in Jannah forever. As the Prophet said, that once the people of Jannah enter into Jannah and the people of the fire enter into the fire, then Allah will bring death in between them. He will bring out death in the form and the shape of a ram. And it will be slaughtered. And then it will be said to the people of Jannah, for you is eternal life and no death. And it will be said to the people of how fire, for you is eternal life and no death. So Jannah is everlasting. You don't have to worry about becoming ill. You don't have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about old age. You don't have to worry about being frail and weak. It is everlasting. From the names that Allah has given to Jannah is Darul Muqama, the place in which we reside. As Allah Azza wa Jal says concerning the believers, that they will praise Allah, saying, Alhamdulillah, Allahi Darul Muqamata min Fadli, the one who has given us this place of residence from His bounty and His grace. And so it is a place of residence. What does that mean? It means that inshallah when you enter into Jannah, you will never become bored. Never become fed up. Never want to go somewhere else. And it's amazing because alhamdulillah I've had the opportunity to travel to many places. If you were to go to my country in the UK and you were to say to people there, where do you want to go? They would say that we're fed up of the UK. We're always here, it's always the same, it's always raining, it's the same weather, we've seen everything here. We want to go to Canada. We want to go and see Niagara Falls. Because they've never seen it, for them it's amazing. But you come to Toronto, or you go to Niagara Falls, and the people there, they're bored of Niagara Falls. They see it every day. They want to go to Calgary, to the west, they want to go to the Rocky Mountains. You go there, and the people that see the Rocky Mountains every day, or very often, they're bored of the Rocky Mountains. They want to go to Egypt and the pyramids. And the people in Egypt want to go to England. They want to see Buckingham Palace and Westminster and these types of places. And you go there and you find that people want to go to Paris. And the people of Paris want to go to Malaysia. And the people of Malaysia want to go somewhere else. Why? Because it's our nature. We get bored. You have little children, you give them a toy. A week later, they break the toy. They're fed up. They don't want to know about the toy. They want a new toy. You give someone a game, they play the game, they become fed up of the game, they become bored. They want to go and find the next game. 
it is our nature to become fed up. But from the beauty of Jannah, and from the blessings of Allah in Jannah, and from the perfect nature of Jannah, is that you will never become bored. Never become bored. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَلَا You will abide therein forever. Never will you want anything else in exchange. Never will a person in Jannah say, Oh Allah, I am bored of Jannah. Oh Allah, I want something other than Jannah. Oh Allah, Jannah is just the same over and over and over. No. Because of its blessings, the blessings that Allah has placed within it from them, is that not only is it eternal, but that a person within Jannah will never want to leave. From the names that Allah has given Jannah in the Quran is Ma'wa, a place where a person seeks refuge, a place where you spend the night, a place that you call home. Indaha Jannatul Ma'wa. With Allah you have Jannatul Ma'wa, an abode which you can call home. From the names that Allah gives to Jannah is Jannatu Adn. Gardens of Eden, Jannatu Adn, eternal gardens that never finish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it in another verse as Darul Hayawan, the place of perpetual life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it yet in another verse Al Firdaus. And Al Firdaus is the name of the highest level of Jannah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Firdaus is the highest of Jannah, and it is in the middle of Jannah, and above it is the throne of Allah, and from, up, from it all of the rivers of Jannah will come. So this is the highest level of Jannah, Jannatul Firdaus. And that's why the Prophet wasallam said, when you ask Allah for Jannah, ask Him for Firdaus. When you make dua to Allah for Jannah, make dua for Firdaus. You want the best in Jannah. You don't just want to be at the bottom. You don't just want the, the minimum level. You don't just want to be the last person to enter into Jannah. But you want to be at the very top. You want to be with the Prophets of Allah and the Messengers of Allah and the companions of the Prophet wasallam and the righteous scholars and Imams of Islam. You want to be with the best of the best. Jannatul Firdaus. And speaking of the best of the best, before I go into a description of Jannah and what is contained into Jannah, I want to remind us of a very beautiful hadith. And the hadith is concerning the last person, the last person that will ever enter into Jannah. This person will be the very last. No one will come after him or her. They are the last person. The Prophet wasallam told us, that after everyone else has entered into Jannah, this person will be the very last individual. And they will be taken out of Jannah. Sorry, out of the fire of hell. They will be taken out of the fire of hell. And they will come out of Jahannam. But they will still be facing towards the fire. And at their back behind them is Jannah, is paradise. But they're so close to the fire of hell that they can still feel its heat. They can still smell its foul odor. They can still see the punishment within. And so after some time that person will ask Allah. They will ask Allah permission to turn around. Imagine subhanAllah, the last person ever to leave the fire of hell. Their greatest wish and desire has been fulfilled. That they've come out of Jahannam. And all they want now is just to turn around. They just don't want to see Jahannam anymore. They don't want to feel its heat. They don't want to smell its foul odor. They want to turn around. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say to that person that if I give you permission to turn around, do you make a promise that you will never ask for anything ever again? And so that person will make a promise. And Allah will allow them to turn around. And they can see Jannah in the very far distance. And Jannah is so beautiful that even from the very far distance, its musk and its perfume can be smelt. And it's so beautiful that even from the very far distance, a person who sees it will begin to desire it. And so after some time, that person will say, Oh Allah, allow me just to go a little bit closer. I just want to see Jannah a bit more. I want it to become a bit closer. It's too distant. I want to see it a bit more clearly. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, O son of Adam, 
How treacherous are you? Didn't you just make a promise that you won't ask for anything else? And so the person will say, yes, O oh Allah, but give me this and I promise I won't ask for anything else. And so Allah from His kindness and His mercy and His forgiveness, He will allow that person to come closer to Jannah. So again that person will stand for as long as Allah wills. And again they will see Jannah and they will smell Jannah and they will hear the sounds of Jannah. And again that person will say, Oh Allah, allow me to come even closer. And again Allah will say to that person, How treacherous are you? Didn't you just make a promise that you won't ask for anything else? And that person will say, yes, O oh Allah, but give me this and I won't ask for anything else. So then Allah will allow that person to come closer. And this continues to happen over and over again until finally that person is standing in front of Jannah. They're finally there. They can see Jannah in front of them. The gates of Jannah are before them. They can now see clearly what is inside Jannah. And again, after some time, that person will say, oh Allah, allow me to enter into Jannah. Amazing. Look at this journey from coming out of the fire of hell, step by step with the mercy of Allah. Now finally, oh Allah, allow me just to enter into Jannah. And so Allah will say, how treacherous are you, O son of Adam? Didn't you just make a promise that you never ask for anything ever again? And they will say, yes, O Allah. But give me this and I will not ask for anything more. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to that person, Tamanna, make a wish. What is it that you want in Jannah? Make a wish. And so he will wish. That person will begin to wish. And then Allah will say to him, wish again. Make another wish. And that person will wish. And again Allah will say, make another wish. And that person will wish. All of the things that that person could ever desire. Houses and cars and whatever else, everything that that person could ever want, he will wish for everything. And then Allah will continue to say, wish for more, ask for more, until finally that person will say, by Allah, I have nothing more to ask for. There is nothing more that I want. There is nothing more that I can possibly wish for. My wish list is complete. So Allah Azza wa Jal will say to that person, for you is everything in the dunya, and ten times it's like. For you is everything within the world, and ten times more. This is the least person in reward. He is the last person to enter into Jannah. He has the least amount of reward. Imagine if everything in the dunya, with all of its diamonds, all of its gold, all of its silver, all of its pearls, all of its jewels and its rubies, all of the money, all of the houses, all of the cars, everything in the dunya was yours. And ten times it's like. That is the least person. The one who has the lowest reward in Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that so great will the favors of Allah be upon that person that when they enter into Jannah they will think no one in Jannah is better than me. Subhanallah. No one in Jannah is better than me. Whereas in reality he is the worst of Jannah. And there is no one that is evil or worse in Jannah. But he is the least of them in Jannah. He has the least reward. But because of the favors of Allah and the perfect blessing of Jannah the person will believe that no one is better than him. No one in Jannah is better than him. In another narration of a different hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the least people of reward will come towards Jannah. And Allah will say to that individual, go and look into Jannah, look for your place in Jannah. Go and look for where you're going to stay. And because everyone has passed into Jannah before him, that person will go and they will see that Jannah is full. It will may be made to seem to them that there is no space left in Jannah. So they will come back and they will say, Oh Allah, everyone has taken their places. Everyone has taken their residences. Everyone's got their palaces and houses. There's no space left for me. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will reward that person with everything in the dunya and its like. This, these will be the people who have the least reward of Jannah. So imagine everyone else. Imagine those other people, may Allah make us from amongst them, who will come before that person, 
who will have the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will have the blessings and the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah azza wa jal, who will have the blessings of Jannah. Imagine those people who will be in Al-Firdaus, who will have the highest level of Jannah. Imagine those people who will be with the prophets of Allah and the messengers of Allah and the companions of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine the people who will live and be close to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is Jannah. This is what we strive for. This is why every single day we wake up early for Salatul Fajr. This is why every single Ramadan we fast for 29 or 30 days straight. This is why every year we give zakah and we give charity. This is why we save thousands of dollars so that maybe once in a lifetime we will go and make Umrah or Hajj. This is why we're nice to our parents and we respect our elders and we have mercy to our youngsters and we do good deeds. Perhaps perchance Allah will enter us into this Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ described Jannah and he said, and this is the most beautiful description, ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر if you want to know Jannah, it's something that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, nor can any heart ever imagine. This is how amazing Jannah is, that even though I will go through its description, the verses of the Quran and the hadith of our Prophet wasallam, in reality, we can never truly understand. Never truly understand, nor can we truly visualize or conceptualize Jannah. Never can we truly know it because no one has ever seen it. Your eyes cannot see it. Your ears cannot hear it. Your heart cannot imagine it. Your mind cannot visualize it. It is so great. It is so vast. So even when we look at the Quran and the Sunnah and we hear words like houses in Jannah and palaces in Jannah and bricks in Jannah and rivers in Jannah and trees in Jannah and food and drink in Jannah and tents in Jannah and so on and so forth. All it is is names. If I was to say to you bricks, you'd look at the bricks outside of this building. If I was to say to you a house, you'd think about the house that you live in or the biggest house that you've ever seen. If I was to say to you a palace, you'd think about the palace of a king or a queen. If I was to say to you a tree, you'd probably think about the tree outside of your door on your street. But the reality is that Jannah is not like any of this. Even though the names are similar, the words are similar, the reality is very different. When we speak about the fruits of Jannah, and we speak about Sidr, and we speak about bananas, and we speak about fish, and we speak about meat in Jannah, the food and drink of Jannah, water and milk and honey and wine and so on, even though the words are the same, the reality is very different. No eye has ever seen it. No ear has ever heard it. No heart has ever imagined it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No soul, no person can ever know that which Allah has prepared for them, that which Allah has concealed from them for the coolness of their eyes in Jannah. It is a reward for that which they used to do. You cannot imagine Jannah. Even if you read all of these descriptions and memorize them, you can never understand its true reality. Never can you understand its true reality because it doesn't make sense to our minds. Allah hasn't given us the capability to imagine such things. It is far greater than whatever you can think of. The Prophet ﷺ described Jannah in vivid detail. He told us about its houses and he told us about its palaces and he told us about its tents and he told us about its trees and he told us about its rivers. He told us about everything that we need to know in Jannah. This is what Allah has prepared for the believers in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, describing the buildings of Jannah, the bricks of Jannah are made of gold and silver. One brick of gold next to one brick of silver. And the cement that will be used in between the bricks is made of musk, sweet smelling perfume. You can't imagine this. You can't in the dunya have a palace made of bricks of gold and silver. 
even to, to mold gold and silver into bricks would be difficult, yet alone to have them stacked upon one another to make walls and structures, and then to have cement made out of musk, it is very difficult. But Allah Azza wa Jal an yawmul qiyamah in Jannah, this is the type of reward that He has prepared. And those houses will be adorned with rubies and pearls and jewels and diamonds. Everything that a person craves in the dunya, things that you think about all the time, having gold and silver, having rubies and diamonds and precious stones and jewels, they will be the adornment of your house. The Prophet wasallam said not only that, but the rooms within that house, they will be so amazing that from the inside, you will be able to see the outside. And from the outside, you will be able to see from the inside. They will be transparent walls. Walls made out of bricks, yet they are transparent. What kind of gold or silver is transparent, only Allah knows. But this is the beauty of Jannah. When you look at some of the most beautiful buildings now in the dunya, they're all glass. Why? Because when they're transparent, they have a certain beauty towards them, rather than just brick and stones. Jannah will be translucent and transparent like this. Not only that, but you will see rivers flowing beneath you. Jannatu adnin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar Everlasting abode under which rivers flow. And now if you go to certain parts of the world, they're trying to make hotels and buildings under the sea, in the ocean, so that you're surrounded by water, or that you can see some type of water river beneath you, because of its beauty. But Allah Azza wa Jal has already thought of this in Jannah. Everyone will have rivers flowing beneath their houses in Jannah. They will be able to see that which is above them and that which is beneath them. Not only that, but certain people will have houses that are made only of gold. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that I entered into Jannah in a dream that he had, that he was in Jannah and he saw a house made of gold. And he thought and he was told that this house belongs to a man from the men of Quraysh. And it was the house of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. On one incident, Jibreel alayhi salam came and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, give salams to your wife Khadija radiallahu anha and tell her that Allah has prepared for her a house in Jannah that is made of pearls. A house that is made of pearls. Imagine the beauty of Jannah. Not only that, but within Jannah there will be trees. Just as you have trees in the dunya, but these are not like any normal trees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them in the Qur'an. وَأَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينَ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينَ فِي سِدْرٍ مَخْضُودٍ وَطَلْحٍ مَنْضُودٍ وَظِلٍ مَمْدُودٍ As for the people of the right, and who are the people of the right? The people that Allah will favor and bless. For them, there will be trees of sidr. And there will be trees with banana leaves, banana trees with leaves that are big, leaves and branches that are very wide. And they will have very long shade. As the Prophet wasallam said, that in Jannah there is a tree, that if a person was to ride on a fast horse under that tree, the shade of that tree would last for a hundred years. A hundred years, a person on a horse rides at the fastest speed that they can ride on a horse. And for a hundred years, they cannot outrun the shade of that tree in Jannah. This is how amazing the tree of Jannah is. Not only that, but in Jannah, the branches and the fruits of the trees will be low. You won't have to climb the trees. You won't have to go to the top to get some fruit. You won't have to get a ladder to pick the fruit. The fruit will come to you. When you desire that fruit, the fruit will be so low hanging that you will be able to pick it off. And it will be fruit unlike any other fruit. And that fruit will replenish itself. It won't be fruit, for example, that only grows in a certain climate, that only grows in the Mediterranean or in the tropical climate, nor will it be fruit that only grows in the summer and the spring, but in the autumn and the winter you can't have it. It will be perpetual fruit. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ For them are fruits that they choose. And the, the birds that they eat, the meat of birds that they eat from that which they desire. 
And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to Abdullah ibn Salam when he asked him, O Messenger of Allah, O Muhammad, what is the fruit or what is the food of the people of Jannah? He replied that the first meal that they will have will be fish liver. The liver of fish will be the first meal of the people of Jannah. They will have the most beautiful of fruit. Not only that, but there will be rivers that flow within Jannah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِّن مَّاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن خَمَرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن عَسَلٍ مُصَفَّعٍ There will be rivers of water that never become impure. That water will never become murky. That water will never become dirty. And there are rivers of milk that never go off. Never does that milk pass by its sour by date. Never does it go off or sour. And there will be rivers of wine that do not intoxicate. And there will be rivers of pure, beautiful, sweet honey. These are the rivers that Allah has prepared for the people of Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said that from that which the people of Jannah will be given to drink are drinks of zinjabil, drinks of ginger, and drinks that a person would love to drink. Things that a person desires, all of that will be given to them. And their vessels, their utensils that they will be served in is gold and silver. And that's why our Prophet ﷺ said to us, don't drink in cups and utensils and don't eat from utensils of gold and silver. Because they are for the disbelievers in the dunya and for the believers in Jannah. In this world, we are not allowed to eat from plates and cups of gold and silver. Because Allah will give us this in Jannah. Allah will serve us from plates and utensils of gold and silver in Jannah. The people of Jannah will have a tent, a tent in which they reside. And so great is that tent that at its highest point is 60 miles long, 60 miles high. Its highest point is 60 miles and it will be made of pearls and precious jewels. It will be as if a person is looking at a star, this is how high it will be that it will be like you are looking in the stars in the heavens. And then when it comes to the dress and the clothes of the people of Jannah, they will be made to wear gold and silver and silk. And that's why the Prophet wasallam forbade the men from wearing silk, because in Jannah they will wear silk. Allah will clothe and dress us insha'Allah in silk. And when it comes to the carpet of Jannah, to the rugs of Jannah, then they are also made of silk and za'faran. And when it comes to what we hear in Jannah, then the people of Jannah will listen to the speech of the prophets of Allah, and to the speech of the righteous and the angels of Allah, and they will listen to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And the people of Jannah will be served by young boys, wildanum mukhalladun, young boys who live forever. They will be the servants of the people of Jannah. They will come and they will serve them with cups and drinks and food. These are the people who will serve them in Jannah. When a person in Jannah has a riding animal, a horse, a camel, whatever it is that they're riding, the Prophet ﷺ said, the stick that you hold in your hand for your animal, if that stick was to be placed in the dunya, it would be better than everything within it. Just a stick of Jannah is better than everything in, in the dunya and everything within it. A stick in Jannah is better than the dunya and everything in it. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that for the believing men in Jannah, they will have wives. And for the believing women in Jannah, they will be more beautiful than anything else. And the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned to us, that the people of Jannah will have an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be the greatest blessing that Allah bestows upon the people of Jannah. Far greater than the palaces, far greater than the houses, far greater than the trees, far greater than the tents, far greater than the rivers, far greater than the food and the drink, far greater than the fruits and everything else, the clothes and the utensils and the gold and the silver and the rubies and the diamonds and the pearls and the jewels and the precious stones, far greater than all of this, will be the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the believers will be able to look 
upon the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that when you come out on, a, on the night of a full moon, do you ever have any problem seeing that full moon within the sky? The companion said, no, O Messenger of Allah. He said, likewise on Yawmul Qiyamah you will see your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala just as you see that full moon. Just as people see the full moon on a cloudless night, a night in which there is no cloud, likewise the people of Jannah will see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the people of Jannah will be told, O servants of Allah, indeed your Lord requests that you come and visit him. Imagine the honor of this invitation. If in the dunya you were to be invited to the house of a king, or the house of the prime minister, or the house of a president, or the house of a multi-billionaire, the house of the richest person on earth, for the vast majority of people, we would consider it to be an honor. We would dress our best, and we do our best to go in the most presentable way. And even if we had to cancel so many appointments, even if we have to change things, we would go and make sure that we could attend. Even if we had to travel and spend money and fly, we would go to attend. So imagine the honor of the people of Jannah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them an invitation to come and visit him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى And for Allah is the greatest of examples. You can't compare Allah to any king or queen or president or prime minister or any rich person or any famous individual. Allah has the highest of examples. So the honor of the invitation of Allah will be far greater than anything else. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً For those who do good, for those who do righteous deeds, for them is a righteous reward and even more than this. The scholars of Tafsir said that the righteous reward is Jannah. But what is more than this, it is to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To look upon Allah is far greater than any other blessing even within Jannah to be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the invitation is given to the people of Jannah, your Lord is inviting you, come and visit Allah, then the people will go. They will go to visit Allah, and Allah will make for them thrones. They will have manabir, thrones and places where they stand and they sit. Some of them from light, some of them from gold, some of them from silver, some of them from pearls, some of them from other jewels. And the people will come and they will sit there and they will wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come. And then it will be said to them, Inna lakum inda You have with Allah an appointment, an appointed time with Allah. There is an appointment that Allah has given you. And so the people of Jannah will say, Hasn't Allah already given us so much? He made our faces bright and he made our scales heavy and he gave us his forgiveness subhanahu wa ta'ala. He entered us into Jannah and he saved us from the fire of hell. Hasn't Allah already graced us and blessed us and given us so much from his bounty that we're in Jannah and we're out of the fire of hell, that we will never die, that we will never want anything more? But then it will be said to those people rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something even greater than this. And they will see above them a light. And when they look up, they will see the face of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. The face of Allah azza wa jal. They will look upon their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa jal will say to them, Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. Subhanallah. Allah will greet them. And Allah will say, Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. And in return, the people of Jannah will say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. Allah is the one who is peace, and all peace comes from Him, and blessed is He, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how they will respond to the greetings of Allah azza wa jal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, What more do you want from me? What else do you want from me? even after everything that they had, everything that Allah would give them in Jannah, and even after seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will ask them, what is it that you want? What more do you want from me? 
So they will say, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are pleased, but we want your pleasure. We are pleased, we are happy in Jannah. We are happy with the blessings of Jannah, but we want to earn your pleasure. We want your pleasure, we want you, O oh Allah, to be pleased with us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, that if I was not pleased with you, if I was not happy with you, then you would never have entered into Jannah. The fact that you are in Jannah, that you are in paradise is a sign that Allah is pleased with you. And then Allah will say, no, that I am pleased with you. And so that will be the greatest blessing that the people will have in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah Azza wa Jal will say to those people when he meets them, I am pleased with you, never again will I be displeased. Never again will I be angry with you. Imagine, subhanAllah, earning the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, not just for a day, not just for an hour, not just for a week or a year, but forever, for eternity. Allah will say for you is pleasure, for you is pleasure, my pleasure, and never again will I be angry with you. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look around us in the dunya, we see the rich and the famous. We see people who have palaces and mansions. We see people who have yachts and private planes. We see so many things in the dunya. But as the Prophet ﷺ said, that the dunya, this world and everything within it, in the sight of Allah, it weighs less than the wing of a mosquito. It's not even equivalent to the wing of a mosquito. If you were to take a mosquito and the wing of a mosquito, and you were to place that mosquito on a scale, how much does a mosquito weigh? How much does it weigh? It weighs nothing. It has no value, it has no worth, it is weightless. So imagine then the wing of a mosquito, not even, a, not even the whole mosquito, just the wing of a mosquito. The dunya and everything within it is even less than that in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is what we covet. This is what we want so much. This is why we work so hard. Because we want the pleasures of the dunya. We want the adornments and the beautifications of the dunya. But we always forget the main prize. The real goal and the real prize. And this is from the traps of shaitan. This is the way shaitan comes and he bamboozles us. Shaitan comes and he confuses us. We think that our goal in life is to have a nice apartment or to drive a nice car, get that BMW or that Mercedes, get that nice car, to have a nice phone, to wear the latest trainers. Shaitan comes and he confuses us. None of this matters in the sight of Allah. If it mattered in the sight of Allah, then the disbelievers wouldn't get it. The disbelievers wouldn't get any money, they wouldn't get any houses, they wouldn't get anything because they're not earning the pleasure of Allah. But Allah gives the dunya to everyone. He gave the dunya to Pharaoh. And He gave the dunya to the Quraysh, the people who disbelieved in our Prophet ﷺ. And He gave the dunya to Qarun, and to Haman, and to Nimrud. And He gave the dunya to so many oppressors, and so many despots and tyrants. Because it doesn't mean anything in the sight of Allah. But what does mean something? As I mentioned before, أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ غَالِيَةً Ala inna Allahi jannah That which Allah is selling, that which matters to Allah is expensive. Because that which matters to Allah is Jannah. No one will enter into Jannah except or unless Allah is pleased with them. That is the main goal. That is what we should have. When we look around us in the dunya and we see all of the beauty, it matters nothing. It has no importance. What Allah has prepared in the next life is far better. And this is from the justice of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because look around you. Not everyone is rich. Not everyone is famous. Not everyone is educated. Not everyone's family is stable. People have so many issues. There are so many Muslims who are good Muslims, righteous people, but they are poor. And they are uneducated. There are children who are good, but they were orphans. There are people who are good, but they come from broken families. There are people who are righteous, but in their countries there is war and famine and drought. So these people, it would be unfair that if all that they had to, to live for, all their goal and ambition was to get the dunya. Because not everyone is equal. 
but from the justice and the wisdom and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Jannah is something that everyone can have. The poor and the rich, the young and the old, men and women, irrespective of where you come from. And that's why the majority of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam were poor and needy and slaves and the elderly and so on and so forth. Yet Allah gave them that same opportunity as everyone else. And when they believed, and when they did righteous deeds, they had a far greater station than anyone who in the dunya is rich or famous or powerful. You only need to look at the story of Bilal radiallahu an, who was a slave. He had no status in the dunya, no money in the dunya. He didn't own anything, he was owned by someone else. Yet when Islam came, even though he was so poor, even though he was so weak, even though he was so oppressed, simply by saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and then earning the pleasure of Allah, he became the greatest, some, one of the greatest of the companions of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that he saw in Jannah, he was in Jannah and he heard footsteps. And he asked whose footsteps are these? And whose were they? They were the footsteps of Bilal radiallahu an. Someone who in the dunya had nothing going for them. If you were to look at them from our very materialistic point of view, they had nothing in the dunya. Yet in the sight of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal raised them very high. And this is why it is not the dunya that matters, but it is the next life. It is not the dunya that matters, but it is the next life. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Whosoever fears the standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they prevent themselves from following their desires then for them is Jannah as their final abode. And as Allah azza wa jal says نِعْمَ الثَّوَابِ وَحَسُنَتْ مُرْتَفَقَى Jannah, what a beautiful reward, what an amazing place of residence. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is what we should be aiming for. Every day we wake up, our goal is to please Allah. Our goal is to come steps closer to Jannah. Our goal is that on Yawm al Qiyamah, Allah will reward us for our deeds and forgive us for our sins. Everything that we do, it is for Jannah. Everything that we do is for Jannah. And we wake up and we go to sleep with that same goal. And if this is our ambition in life, if this is what we strive for, if this is why we, uh, we, this is the way that we raise our children, this is the way that we educate our friends, this is the way that we do everything, everything goes towards this single goal of Jannah, then inshallah, Allah will bless us and He will reward us and He will give us that paradise that we seek. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His most beautiful names and His most lofty attributes that He gathers us all and unites us in Jannah. And that if even though we may not get to see one another again in the dunya, that insha'Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah will resurrect us in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That we will be from amongst those people who will drink from his pond. That we will be from amongst those people who will have the shade of Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That we will enter all of us, our parents, our families, our teachers, our shuyukh, and all of our brothers and sisters, all of us will enter into Jannatul Firdaus. Wa sallallahu wa sallam nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.